G. Welcome back to my channel. So, so excited that you are here. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. I appreciate you. It's Jody Dunn. I'm coming at you with my first Finances Friday. Finance Friday. My friend Brittany, when I did my uh, savings challenge video, was like, you should call it Finance Friday. I think that's what she said. I kind of like that. So I'm coming at you with my first Finance Friday. Super duper excited to bring you this video. Oh my gosh. I have been like, all right, let's get into it because you know I'm going to ramble and it's going to be forever. If you're new and you just on the channel, I'm so excited that you are here. Would you please say hello to me and let me know that you're new right down there. I would love to welcome you and say hello back to you. And if you are already subscribed, thank you so much for coming back to another video. I appreciate you. Let me know if you are joining in the 2021 Savings Challenge. So my goal for today is I am going to give you a little bit of um, explanation, I guess, to what I am doing also so I can use this a, as a resource in case somebody comes in in February and there are things that I don't explain and they're like, wait, why do you do that or what are you doing with that? I can direct them to this video versus having to try to re-explain it over and over again. So before we get into that, we got to get into the two most important updates real quick. I got to hold my new crib, baby. Last night, oh my gosh, he is absolutely perfect. Here's a picture. He is absolutely perfect. I am so in love. I cannot wait to go see him again today. I, I don't even know if I'm going to get to see him every day, but I can't imagine not seeing him every day now. <laughs> and the second big update that we got to get to is the big guy. The big guy. There he is. Snoozing away. Hot on the couch. Pretty all that like to see Gus. He's taking his morning nap. <laughs> We have morning naps, afternoon naps, evening naps. We have all kinds of naps. So there he is. I'm sorry I'm blocking him. He is on the wrong side of the couch today. All right, so I did a video and I explained where I would be doing a 2021 savings challenge. I'll link that video in the description box if you wanna go ahead and check that out with all of that information. So we're definitely gonna do that today. And then I also told you that I was going to be bringing you a little bit of like budgeting and how I'm gonna do some things different in 2021 to reach some financial goals. And a lot of the inspiration that I got came from finding The Budget Mom on YouTube. I wasn't searching. I didn't even know I wanted, well, I did know I wanted to make this change. I didn't even know I was going to make this change. You know how YouTube likes to recommend videos to you. I have no idea why they recommended her to me, but they did. <laughs> And I have binge watch so many of her videos. And I got really excited because one thing that I always struggled with, I already said in my savings challenge video that I've been horrible at budgeting my whole life. And I think I know why now. Sometimes it's just pinpointing where the issue is so that you can correct it. And she talks about something that I've never heard before, which is budgeting by paycheck. And so I incorporated that and I'm going to start doing that versus saying, okay, this is my January expenses and this is you know, what I'm doing here. Most of us get paid by a paycheck. Why are we not budgeting to our paychecks? You may get paid once a week. You may get paid every other week. You may get paid once a month. Twice, you know, The list goes on and on. So I'm going to start budgeting by paycheck versus the entire month and then stressing myself out if I'm not, you know, on budget within the first two weeks and giving up, which is what I have always done. So I'm really excited. Now I'm going to be incorporating a ton of changes into my finance this year, which means I'm going to fumble. I'm going to have mistakes. I'm going to have to tweak things. I'm going to have to rework things. Always remember, this is not, we are not ever looking for perfection. We are looking for progress. So I already know that things are not going to work out the way that I hope that they work out <laughs> every single month. And being newer to budgeting, I know, like I already had an issue with my first dang week. Uh, so I, st I wrote out my budget for the week. 
or actually for two weeks because my husband gets paid bi-weekly. And I estimated his income because you, you never know what your paycheck is going to be unless your salary and you get paid the exact same thing every time you get paid. Well, he does not. It does fluctuate. And I estimated it and I estimated it by $80 more than it actually was, which is a lot. And I totally didn't think about the fact that um, this paycheck had Christmas and New Year's, which are holidays. And so he wasn't getting any like extra hours on those days because he didn't work. He just got, you know, straight holiday pay for those days. So anyways, I already had to get the whiteout pen out <laughs> and rework things. So this is how it's going to go. Now, a couple things I do want to tell you. Um, number one, I really don't think that it's necessary for me to share every single bit of my finance with you only because, not because I'm afraid to or anything like that, only because I already know how it goes. When somebody maybe wants to do something and they watch a video and they go, oh, well, my situation's not like that, so I can't do that. That's a little excuse we like to make up. So your situation is not going to be the same as mine, right? So if you wanted to do this with me, you're not going to have the exact same income. You're not going to have the exact same bills. You're not going to have everything that I have. So I don't want it to, to be to where somebody uses that as an excuse. Well, I don't get paid the same as she does, or I don't have that same bill as she does, or I don't, you know, because I already know how the human brain works. <laughs> we like to do that. So what I'm going to do, first of all, let me tell you that I am a totally cashless spender. Totally cashless. I do not ever pull cash out of the bank. I use my debit card. I use online bill pay. I do everything electronic and I'm switching things up this year. And I'm not going to go 100% cash or anything like that. But the way I have been doing it before is not working for me to get me to my goals. So I'm going to switch things up and see how I like it. Now, I did have a few comments on my savings challenge video. Um, something to the effect of, I wish I could do this, but I don't ever have cash. And I just want you, here's one of the areas that we create a tremendous amount of stress in our lives. We create it by being incongruent to what we say we want and the obstacle that is in the way of achieving what we say we want to do. And in this case, the obstacle that is in the way is you. There is no other obstacle. I am totally cashless and I have decided to make a change and I'm going to start using some cash envelopes because it's a choice. I get to choose how I do my finances. So don't say, I wish I could do this, but I'm, I'm cashless. You get to change that. If you wanted to do this, you could do this. You could also say, I want to do this, but I don't want to deal with cash. You know, a little saying I love people don't lack resources. They lack resourcefulness. Tony Robbins, you could do this cashless. You would just have to figure out what that looks like. I am choosing to do it this way. You could also say, yeah, this looks fun, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> don't lie to yourself because that's what you're doing. You're giving yourself an excuse. You're giving yourself an obstacle that really is um, unreal or it's not unreal. It's fake. It's a fake obstacle because you're the obstacle. You get to choose how you do your finances. It's perfectly okay to say, I don't want to do this, but don't say, I wish I could do it, but I can't because of this obstacle when the obstacle really is you. You can make the change to get cash if you wanted to do it this way. And you can also make the change to do it how it works for your lifestyle. We cause ourselves literally so much stress because we're telling our brain we want to do this, but there's an obstacle, but really there is no obstacle. You're the obstacle. So again, not saying there's a right or wrong. I'm not saying you should do this. None of that. What I'm saying is don't say, 
that you can't do it because of a reason that is totally not true, okay? <laughs> and I also had some comments like, I think this is awesome. This is how I do my finances and it works for us. That's totally fine. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna be bringing you along on my journey. Again, we're going to be fumbling. I'm going to have to rework things. This is a huge learning process for me. This is a huge change for me. And I will also just remind you, because I've already had some comments of people that have started reading this book and love it. This is one book that had totally changed my mindset around money because I struggled with a very bad money mindset and I still work on it every day. If you have not read this book, I would recommend getting it on Audible because Jen Sincero is fantastic at reading this to you. I've listened to it on Audible so many times. This is a fantastic book. I will tell you one other book that I have listened to on Audible and also bought in print version that really helped me in a lot of ways is this book, Success of the Millionaire Mind. Totally not what I thought it was going to be. It's really, truly about changing your mindset around money fantastic book. I would listen to this on Audible as well or get an in print copy if you like to read. All right. So, um, I think that's all I wanted to say. I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to the kitchen table. We're going to do our savings challenge. We're starting our savings challenge for 2021. And then I'm going to show you the changes I'm making and how I'm stuffing some cash envelopes versus leaving that money sit in the bank and what I plan to do with that money. There are things that I am not going cashless. I am not going cashless with, or I am not pulling out cash, excuse me, for things like my mortgage. I will leave that in my bank account and I will pay that as normal. I am not gonna pull out cash for gas. I'm gonna leave that in my bank account and, and what I plan on doing, and I already started doing, is I'm gonna be tracking all of my expenses, all of them. Because that's the only way I'm going to get a handle on this and know exact because I set up a budget you know for this paycheck but is it realistic is it going to work out exactly like I want it to I don't know because I don't exactly know our spending because I just never paid attention to it for that for for years so all right so we're gonna go to the kitchen table we're gonna stuff some cash envelopes we're gonna get to the savings challenge and um, I would love to hear what you're doing. Are you doing anything different for 2021? Um, let me know. And I think that's that's it. I think that's the only explanation I wanted. All right, we're going to get to the kitchen table. If you enjoy the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I appreciate you so much. And let's get into this. All right, we are here at the kitchen table. And I... I don't know, have spent 30 minutes trying to figure out how to set this up and how to do this. And finally, I'm like, Jody, just again, we're not searching for perfection here. We're searching for progress. So as I continue to do these videos, I will be able to see things that I don't like or change because the money just looks all funky in the camera. But if I turn it around this way. I don't know if like you can't see it. I don't know. It doesn't matter. All right. Let me show you real quick what I'm working with here and what I'm going to do. So I did order again. I told you I binged watch the budget mom, a bunch of her videos and I did order her. It's like a box set planner. So this is the January book and it's the budget by paycheck book. So I'll just show you quickly what it has in it. Um, basically it gives you, I think five weeks of information. So you write down your paycheck, your, you know, your income here, which could be more than just from paycheck. And I'll go over that in a second. Um, any bills you are going to pay with this paycheck, cash envelopes, all of that good stuff. And then just other sheets in here to extra debt, extra savings, and then your cash envelopes. And basically you write down the category, how much you're going to put in that cash envelope from this paycheck and what denomination of bills you need. So that way, when you go to the bank, you know how to do it. And then the back of the book has like, um, here, I already started tracking my expenses. Um, and it has, um, like categories. I kind of started filling in some categories and writing some things down to close out your budget for the month. So that's what I'm working with. You do not need this. 
I decided to splurge. I used rebate money. I purchased this. You can do this with a notebook. You do not need anything fancy. I also bought myself some things to hold my cash envelopes. Again, you can just get regular old envelopes from the dollar store. So don't let any little obstacle that you may put in, put in there deter you from doing this. You literally could get a notebook from the dollar store and envelopes from the dollar store. So this is the way I'm choosing to do it. Again, I'm not trying to give anybody financial advice here. I'm just bringing you along on my journey and hope that it helps you that I'm sharing what I am doing. So basically, as I told you in the intro, um, I'm not going completely cash spending. I am still going to be using my checking account for several things like my bills. What I decided to do was basically create these cash envelopes here of what people call sinking funds. And I didn't even know what the heck sinking funds were. I thought they were literally an investment. <laughs> sinking funds are basically just a fancy term for expenses. I know some people call them savings, which it is savings in a way, but they're basically expenses that are going to be coming that maybe are not coming right this second but so much better to be prepared for versus like what I've done for years is kind of not be prepared for them. So I created a bunch of sinking funds. I might have too many. I might need to change them. I don't know. Um, for things like Christmas, gifts, um, my car insurance. I try to pay my car insurance once for six months. I get a discount by doing it that way but that's a big bill that comes once every six months. So instead I created a sinking fund and cash envelope where I'm gonna put cash away for that every single month. So that way when it does come due, I don't have this big bill that I'm scrambling for. So basically that's what sinking funds are to me. Again, I know some people call them savings, which you are saving, but you're literally saving for an expense you know is coming that maybe is not do every single month. Um, something else I'm putting in there is like a clothes budget basically or family fun. So you can do whatever categories you wanna do. So what I have is I have two separate cash piles here and I will tell you why I have two separate cash piles. Um, this is basically from the paycheck that I'm going to be stuffing into my sinking funds. And then this right here, a little bit special. Um, first of all, I have a Christmas present. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with that. And then I decided, I went through and I added up all of my rebate money. And I decided that I would take $300 out in cash from my rebate money. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that, okay? So let's just go over this pile first. So first of all, I have, um, and I don't know that it even matters, but this book for me is kind of like the things that I'm going to be spending probably sooner. And this book is things that I know are going to be coming, but I might not be spending it in a month. I did make a sinking fund for miscellaneous um, because I feel like I'm, I'm going to forget something and things are going to come up and I don't know what category to put it in. And so I have a miscellaneous. So let me see which book I put this one in. Okay, this one. All right, so I got a $100 cash gift for Christmas from my dad. And what I have decided to do is I created a sinking fund for beauty. And beauty for me is going to be anything that like go, going to get my hair done, going to get my nails done, um, things like that that I know usually I get my nails done once a month, my hair done once every three to four months maybe. Um, and my hair is definitely ex an expense. And so to be saving for it, I think is just smart for me versus taking it out of my checking account and then having to compensate for it. So I'm gonna take this $100 cash that my dad gifted me and I'm just going to put this right into my beauty envelope. So I know that is strictly for beauty. I got these little tracker sheets off of Amazon. You can, again, just do this in a notebook, but I wanna track how much each envelope has in it. 
And I don't know that I will continue to use these or if I'll go to an envelope, I just don't know. So I'm just gonna write the date and how much I am putting in here and now what my balance is. I'm just gonna write what it's from. And I'm not gonna do this with every single one or the video will be way too long. <laughs> I hope that's not backwards, but there you go. So this is my tracker. So now I know I have $100 in my beauty envelope. All right, now I have $300 that I pulled out from rebate money. And I'm gonna show you what I decided to do with this. I'm, gonna, I'm putting it all in my sinking funds here. So I took half of it, which is $150. And I am going to put that into... I did put it in this one because I do think I will be spending this money every single month. I just have to find it. I'm going to put it towards debt. One of my goals is to pay off all of my credit card debt for, um, and I want to get it done this year. I just have to find my envelope. Did I not make one? There it is. It's my last envelope. So this, and I got it. I haven't even labeled these or anything. I'm bringing this to you so imperfectly. So I'm gonna take $150 that I pulled from my rebate money and I'm going to add this into my debt envelope, okay? And then what my plan is at this point is every month, whatever extra I have is going to go towards paying off credit cards, okay? So that's that. Um, my second goal for the year is to have an emergency fund because I don't have one. I'm looking for which envelope. This will get easier. I put it in this one because I don't expect to spend the emergency fund every month and I'm taking $50 for my rebate money and I'm going to put that towards my emergency fund envelope. And then I have $100 left. And so what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna put um, I wrote down what I'm doing, so hang on. Fun. I'm going to put $20 from my rebate money into the fun envelope. Um, giving. I'm going to put $20 of my rebate money into my giving envelope. Um, beauty. I know I already put 100 from my dad's Christmas gift, but I am also going to take money from my rebate money and I'm going to put it into my beauty envelope as well. So now I have 120 in beauty and I'll go through and mark my sheets off camera and hopefully, um, well, next week I'll definitely have them updated so you can take a look at those. Um, clothes, this is clothes. I'm gonna take $20 and I'm gonna put $20 in my clothes envelope. I already did my $50 emergency. And then I'm gonna move on to this one. And I have a envelope for car. And basically that is car maintenance. So like oil changes, oh my gosh. Synthetic oil changes are outrageously expensive. Holy crap. So I'm going to put this $20. This is my last $20 for my $300 that I took out of rebate money. And I'm going to put that in my car maintenance envelope. Okay. So now we have money left from the paycheck. So the first thing I'm going to do, remember our little box here? I don't know if I'm getting this all in the frame. This is my savings challenge. And I wanna go ahead and do my first envelope for my savings challenge. We drew them together. And my first week was $68. So I'm gonna pull $68 from my cash. And I am going to put that. So I've got 50, 65, 6, 7, 8. I'm gonna put that in my first savings envelope. And I told you I bought these because I wanted to steal them and not touch them. So there we go. And I got, I didn't buy, this came in a package, so I cut them down. So I got my little dividers. I'm going to put this right in the back of my box here. And these are my completed cash envelopes. And then remember, 
This is going to be my next week savings one that we already drew. And then next week we'll draw two more. So that's my savings challenge envelope stuffed and completed. All right, let's get stuffing the rest of my sinking funds here. So from the paycheck, I am going to put $10 in miscellaneous. I don't know if I should take the envelopes out of the book if that's easier. I'll figure it out. So $10 is going in my miscellaneous envelope. Um, I'm not going to put anything from the paycheck for fun this week. Nothing in giving. Home expenses, I'm going to put $10. So this is going to be just anything maybe that we need for the home that doesn't come up every single week. Like, I don't know, we buy salt for our softener once a month or something like that. Just, I don't know, things like that. Light bulbs, things like that. Um, let's see, beauty. I did budget from this paycheck. $10 to go into beauty. So now I have 130 in beauty. Woo -woo. I need to get my nails done soon. Um, pets. I'm going to put $15 into my pet envelope. And at this point, kind of what I'm anticipating for this is vet visits. Um, something that I'm saving for that I know I will have an expense for. And y'all know I got Gus. The last time I took him to the vet, it was $400. So I would rather have a sinking fund set up for that. And then clothes. I budgeted. Is this my clothes? Yes. $10. So now I have $30 in clothes. And then we're going to move on to the, I didn't budget anything extra for debt from this paycheck. We're going to move on to this one. This is the one that I kind of consider that I won't be spending monthly, most likely. So first one is Christmas. And I am going to take 10, 11, 12, 13, $14. I'm going to start off 2021 Christmas with $14. Gifts, this could be birthday gifts or whatever kind of gifts. I'm going to put $10 in two gifts. And then home improvements. This is going to be anything that I want to do to the house. We really actually need new carpet. Um, so that's probably my number one goal I'm saving for. So I'm going to put $10 towards that. Emergency fund. I already put 50 from my rebate money. I'm gonna add another $15 to my emergency fund and then medical. So medical, I definitely need to start saving for. Both of my girls are gonna need braces very, very soon. So I'm gonna put $10 into medical and that could be just be for any medical. So there we go. So I basically took $68 out of my paycheck um, or my husband's paycheck to put into our weekly savings challenge and $114 in cash that I stuffed into things that I know I'm going to spend in the future, but I don't want to leave it in my checking account where it's just way too easy to lose it by swiping the debit card and all of those things. So here's our week one, OMG. <laughs> Let me know if this was helpful. Again, I it was not perfect at all. I'll probably have to figure out some different things that I want to change and do. But I hope maybe it gave you some ideas. Let me know if you're doing the savings challenge. Let me know if you've already used sinking funds to save for expenses that are coming up. And that's it. I'm going to see you again soon. I hope you have a great day.